please. Yep, a uh, few things. First of all, um, uh, obviously Kentucky's a great basketball team. Uh, I think Ashton Hagens has just gotten better and better and better. He's really good. Uh, he's really good. And, and for where he was in a junior and senior in high school, because we had you know, recruited him, um, I think he's just got to continue to get better and better and better, which is a great credit to Coach Calipari and his staff on on the development of Ashton Higgins. And I thought he was a big difference uh, today. Um, the biggest part of the game was 47, or excuse me, 44, 41, and we left 11 points on the board. I mean, that's just that's just the game. Um, and Michael DeVoe, who's been great all all uh, uh, season for us for the most part, had you know, one of the leading three-point shooters in the country, had two wide open threes, um, and, he, and he missed both. Khalid Moore had one that went in and out, literally went down and out, and then Asante Price had a layup that we missed. That's 11 points. And when you're playing a really good team on the road, uh, and with some of our, you know, we're missing two of our better players with Jose Alvarado and Jordan Usher, uh, you just don't have any margin for error not to score in those type of situations when you get those type of looks. And uh, that was the game right there. Uh, I thought our guys executed our game plan. We put ourselves in a position to win the game defensively. We are who we are defensively, you know, we, we are a very good defensive team, um, and we do a good job with what we do defensively. We did a good job on the glass of limiting them. You know, our goal was to keep them under nine uh, uh, offensive rebounds, which we did. And um, But, you know, we missed some threes in the second half. We missed some free throws, and Kentucky made their free throws. And uh, that was the difference right there. Okay, you have questions? Here, here. Josh, is there anything in particular about Ashton that might separate him from other good point guards out there? I, I just tell you, he's he, he, he was a pro tonight. He was a first-round draft pick the way he played tonight. He, he's gotten better. Uh, he's continued to improve, and he's a, and he's a phenomenal young man. He's just a, he's a good he's a good person. Uh, he's got a, you know he's got a good spirit about him. So uh, I'm I'm really high on Ashton. I think he's really really good, um, and he's continued to get better each game as each game has gone by. He's shooting the ball better, um, so it's a credit to him. Heck. I told Coach Calipari <clears throat> when we were at Memphis, uh, Georgia Tech shooting free throws like we did at Memphis, and you know they're shooting free throws like you know you know you have won maybe as much as he won at Memphis, he might have won he might have won 100 percent of his games the way they're shooting the free throw right right now. I think they're one of the two or three best in the country, and that's a big difference. You know, in games when it's a possession by possession game, be able to make those free throws, and uh, uh, you know that's a, that's a big deal. But Hagens is a stud. I think he's a first-round draft pick. Did you ever imagine that you'd go from being John Calipari's assistant to facing against him uh, with another team? No, I mean, look, I was when I got the job at Memphis. The only reason I got the job at Memphis was because nobody wanted the job at Memphis because nobody wanted to follow Coach Calipari at Memphis uh, because you know he had the most wins in a four-year period. His last four years, he won close to ninety-five percent of his games. So you know when that when he left, um, I would just happen to be the literally the last man standing. They had to hire somebody, and eventually, they just asked me if I wanted the job. And uh, but I was all set to come to, to to come to Kentucky with with Coach Cal, and so uh, I was very fortunate. Look, I got I got really lucky. A door opened up. Um, I was at the right place at the right time. I don't forget that. I understand that an opportunity was there, and allowed that me to, to have an opportunity to be able to coach at a incredible institution like you know at Memphis and then to be able to recruit an incredible institution at Georgia Tech and to be able to coach in the ACC um, so uh, I'm very fortunate and uh, you know thankful and grateful and extremely grateful for Coach Cal for allowing me to come to the staff to, which allowed me to get the job at Memphis. Josh, can you talk a little bit about James and it just seems like he's in a funk and can't get out of it and Richards actually did a really nice job on him tonight so yeah, I mean, look, I mean, James, um, the, the better James will be, uh, it's going to be better when our guards can continue to help James. You know, James, is, is he's, he's gotten better, obviously, from where he started. But, you know, he, he, had, he struggled last week a little bit, obviously, as we know. And, um, you know, he's gotten some foul trouble. He did have three block shots tonight. A couple times, I thought, on his, on his fouls, he tried to make a couple home run plays. We put him in a position to get a... To get a silly foul, but um, we need for us to have success. We need James to be really good, and for us to have the success that we all want to have, we need 
Jose Alvarado and Jordan Usher when he's there to help us because that will help James be able to maybe some things to get into the paint to free him up to get some easier baskets. Um, but in the short term, until that happens, uh, he's just got to be really effective. And the biggest thing is the turnover deal. You know, he had four again or three again today, and, um, and we just got to be better about that in that area. Josh, can you talk a little bit about what maybe Keon Brooks what provides for them coming off the bench? Yeah, Keon Brooks was solid, uh, but you know, my whole thing is I we, we followed the game plan. There was no issue. Ashton Hagens was uh, the, the biggest difference in the game today was them making their free throws, but also that the 11 points we left on the board when we were 44-41 late in the second half, or middle of the second. That that's the game, and uh, can't they, they got a bunch of good players. Uh, the, the eight that played are all high level guys. They're all going to play in the NBA, you know. But obviously, the 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 guy that's a First round surefire, first round pick. I assume is Ashton Higgins, and he was really, really good today. Uh, but our, you know, we follow our game plan. We did our job, and we put ourselves in a position to win. We just there was that segment. There was 11 points left on the board, and we don't have that margin for error. That's against a really good team like Kentucky. Uh, you're just not in a not in a position to do that. Right here, Darrell. Do you remember your very first meeting with Cal? What you were thinking? Your impression. Yeah, I mean, I knew Coach Calipari during recruiting um, and all that. And I look, I, I really mean this. And I, a couple people, Mr. Tipton, had called me, and uh, John, uh, John Hale, let's see here, I mean, from the, uh, there you are, okay, he called me. And I, and I said this, and I'm being dead serious. Um, uh, I, and I know he, he'll deny it, but when he, he is, when he retires, he will not go into TV. He will go for politics. And I really believe he's going to run, he was going to possibly run for the President of the United States. And, and if not that, he's going to go for a governor and senator. He can come up here and deny it, but mark my words. And, um, and, and he just, you know, he has that charisma, he has that energy to do it, and he's always been interested in it. And, um, and so I'm telling you, when he does it and he can deny it now, he will end up running for it. And I, I don't know which party or anything like that. Uh, but he's he's got that ability. He's a he's a genius, uh, a marketer. He's you know he's a, he's obviously a genius of a basketball coach. He's one of the greatest to ever do it, regardless of sport. Uh, he's one of the greatest coaches ever, and um, it wouldn't matter if if he was uh, running a slice by slice pizza place down the street. It would become a multi million dollar company. So that's just he just has something about that that you know the the ability to be very successful no matter what. He just happened to choose basketball, and, and he would have been successful no matter what he does. Josh, you have an offense where it feeds off the defensive energy, and in the second half, you did a decent job of forcing turnovers, but there was a stretch where you made only one of 12 baskets. What was kind of the issue with translating those turnovers into points? We, we had, we, the whole game was that segment where he left 11 points on the board. Michael DeVoe, we couldn't, Michael DeVoe was wide open, incredible look. I mean, if he gets 100 of those, he's got to shoot 100 of them. And Khalid Moore had, was wide open, and the ball literally went in the hoop and rolled out. And um, and then we missed the layup. Um, so we that that's the basketball game. You know, if you make, uh, you just you know when you're in your best shooter, and one of the best shooters in the entire country has that open of a shot. You know, it just um, uh, that that segment was the entire basketball game. We make a shot here or there, it, it could be a different outcome in the end. Anyone else? Josh, you mentioned how difficult it is to follow somebody like Cal. Uh, let's say when he runs for president and you're not at Georgia Tech, Kentucky offers you the job, you can take it in a heartbeat, wouldn't you? Well, I haven't even, I, I just hope to beat Ball State on Wednesday. That's my only thought process, is I hope to beat Ball State. But I will tell you, whoever, I mean, look, I mean, I, I don't, Coach Calipari is going to be here for a while, obviously. I mean, his. I mean, I think if he goes for another 10, 15 years, he could end up, he'll end up being one of the, the winningest coach. Um, but whoever follows him, whoever follows him at UMass, whoever follows him at Memphis as I did, whoever follows him at Kentucky, is, you know, it's going to be a hard job. That's just, I mean, at the success that he's, not only has he won games, but stuff he's done with, the, you know, the community and everything else. I mean, he's just, uh, he's one of the very elite to do what he's done. So, um, yeah, my, I just really hope he beat Ball State on Wednesday. That's my only focus. Thanks. Okay, cool.